Hello, and welcome to episode 195 of The Joy of Coding. Hi, my name's Mike Conley, going to be hacking on some Firefoxy stuff today. Really happy to have you here. It's gonna be great. Uh, let's, let's get in, let's do this. Um, here's my screen, here's the agenda. Um, a reminder, no plan survives breakfast. I don't exactly know what's gonna happen during today's stream. Might get stuck, might succeed, who knows what'll happen, none of it's really pre-planned. I'm trying to capture software development in the raw, and that effectively means doing my normal job, uh, but in front of a camera, and that could mean that things go wrong because you know not everything's perfect. So just be advised. Well, the second thing is that the agenda that we're looking at here on my screen is something that you have access to, which is probably kind of handy if um, you know you want to click on links or something. So if you want a copy of the agenda, it's in the uh, video description if you're on YouTube. If you're on Air Mozilla, it's in the handouts section. And if you're watching this on Twitch, then it's about to drop into the Twitch chat. Hello, Akris. Good to see you. Akris just wave, or said hello in the Twitch chat. So here's the agenda. Booyah. And uh, I also want to point out that there is an episode guide. The episode guide is a viewer, like from viewers just like you, a uh, completely viewer driven resource for knowing what happened in a particular episode without having to necessarily watch the whole thing. It also is an opportunity to add corrections, addenda, etc. And we've got all the way up into episode 193, so uh, off by one episode. Um, but that's okay because I'm pretty sure that there are some pull requests that we can merge like right now uh, Here's one episode 194 from Smurf D. I'm gonna take a look at that So Smurf D sent in episode 194 and you too can send in an episode guide You can also correct an episode guide if you or or add your own notes So for example if there's something in the episode guide that is missing that you think would be useful for other people Then uh, send me a pull request and if you're not sure what a pull request is check out the agenda there's some links there some handy links on what a pull request is and uh and how you can go about sending me one to the repository it's all here on github so that's how it works so what did i do last week yeah live hacking channel is back i pointed out the mozilla release calendar i pointed out serenity os and andreas kling and uh, the work on the browser engine for a hand rolled os we worked on mac os support for picture in picture we added lock aspect ratio uh i reviewed a patch I showed HG shell dash L, yeah, and HG touch, and I talked about interviewing people and what that's like, and what I look for when I interview um, candidates. And then rating the episode, yep, yeah, all this looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and merge that in. As per usual, a great episode guide coming in from Smurf D. So I say thank you, thanks, confirm, and comment. So that's merged in. There's another pull request. Uh, Danny Colon comes coming in with a missing episode 32 um, and correcting a previous episode that had been marked 30 that had I think the dates wrong I guess um, let's just quickly check this out on air Mozilla here's the oh man this is I wonder what's gonna happen when I go to this address oh nice redirect Oh, blast from the past. Amazing. What episode was this? Well, for usual. Oh, I have. This was again, on October 28th. And I don't know what episode it was, but I'll presume it was episode 32. Um, yeah, and it was on October 28th. So good catch there, Danny Colon. And uh, there's a YouTube link there as well. And then links to the bugs I worked on. Apparently, I worked on handling the back whenever we were working on electrolysis support this is way back in the day 2015 almost almost four years to the day um four years two days ago uh, or rather four years and two days ago uh was this episode that's crazy i've been doing this for a long time anyways uh that all looks great and then episode 31 came in and that was uh the week before october 30 uh, 21st and what was I working on? Crash tab indicates all tabs are crashed and every tab loads the crash tab page. Um, let's just quickly check out the link to the episode. Episode 31, make sure that the link works. Huh? Come on, yay, there it is. And I'm- <laughs> 
and I was wearing a funny hat for some reason. Maybe that was for Halloween. I don't know. Um, but that doesn't make any sense if I was wearing it on the 21st. Um, so was that date correct? Let's just double check there. I'm doing a little bit of detective work. I'm doing a little bit of detective work here because, uh, you know, if I was uh, wearing a funny hat, you'd think I'd do it for Halloween. All right, let's fast forward a little bit, see if we can find a date in here. Oh man, look at my green screen skills. My head's in the way, sorry. But, uh, or here, let me. Look at the green screen skills in episode 21. But that, yeah, that was October 21st. Uh, I, I just, I, I did it wrong. Or I was wearing a, a mohawk for some reason. Maybe I promised I'd do it. At any rate, that all looks uh, correct. Thank you so much, Danny Colon. I'm gonna go ahead and merge those in. Uh, boom, boom. And thanks. And with that, I think the episode guide is now up to date. So thank you very much, uh, Danny Colon and Smurf D. Okay, so what do I wanna work on today? Um, yeah, I don't have anything listed here. That doesn't mean I'm not doing anything. It means that uh, uh, I hadn't, I, I'm like really down to the wire choosing a thing. And actually there's like a late breaking picture in picture bug and I wanted to work on that today. So if you've been watching the stream for a while, um, you'll know that I've had uh, this feature I've been working on for a couple of months now called picture in picture. I've been working on it off and on, sometimes during the stream, sometimes not. And right now picture in picture is enabled by default on Windows uh, on I think 71 and seven, uh, 71 and up. So 71 is currently in beta, and the patch to enable it by default in 71 landed yesterday. And that actually reminds me, before I forget, um, picture 71 uh, nightly, no, picture Windows default. Yeah, this was the patch, uh, the, the bug where I enabled it by default for 71. Originally, we were going to do a slow rollout, but, uh, but in the end, we decided not to, um, and to just go ahead and, and turn it on all, the whole hog. Excuse me. So that's what's going on there. And this is something that I think I just realized needs a release note. Um, so that's why I'm going to quickly uh, rel, dev rel needed. Where, where, how do you say that it needs a release note? Rel note. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Release note. Why is this notable? A new feature has been enabled uh, for... Um, for Windows users that allows them to pop some video elements out into an always on top video player. Affects Firefox for Android? No. Suggested wording. Um, uh, Windows users now have the ability to uh, view to pop out videos into an always on top video player using pic the picture in picture feature. Pop out some videos, pop out, I'm gonna say videos, uh, videos on the web, web, um, for most videos, this can be accomplished by hovering the video with the mouse and clicking on the picture in picture toggle. Links documentation, uh, picture in picture. There's a blog post, a hacks blog post. Uh, originally blogged about here but I'm hoping to put a more um, uh, put another blog post together for the release to describe how it works and then for documentation there was like a sumo sumo picture yeah there was a sumo article that was added for it here it is how to turn it on and off 
sumo article article on how to control the feature um, and what was that what else documentation blog post was there any other documentation I don't think so picture in picture No, I think that was the only documentation that was added on Sumo. OK, so I have now requested a release note. Uh, and the thing I want to focus on was this bug over here. So how do I, I feel like I'm getting a little bit distracted. And the good news is that I have a new sound effect for whenever I feel like I've been stuck in some place for too long or I feel distracted. It's, I don't know if you remember that new, uh, that sound effect I used last week. That's from the trailer for a new film that I'm excited to see called Lighthouse. Uh, this is another quote from that trailer. How long have we been on this rock? Five weeks? Two days? Help me to recollect. I love that clip, and I will use that whenever I feel like I've been stuck doing something for way too long. All right, so uh, let's, let's start thinking about uh, this bug here that was filed. Eight hours ago, a member of our media team filed this bug. Um, so the, the API that we use that I added to make it so that one can clone the video frames, because whenever we do picture in picture, let me show you an example. Um, here's Big Buck Bunny, my classic example. I'm just going to mute it. But if I uh, open it up, so it looks like the video frames have moved over here. But what's actually happening is we're duplicating the video frames from one side to the other. And the reason why I'm duplicating them is to make it so that it's a little more, um, what was the re the original reasoning? I, I know what the reasoning is. I'm just trying to find the right words for it. It was because we wanted to be really cautious. The worst case scenario is that the user opens up uh, video in picture in picture and it doesn't work, but then the video is broken for some reason. Like they, they tried to use the feature and now, oh, I can't even watch Big Buck Bunny anymore in a normal mode. And so uh, the reason that we clone the frames is so that if anything goes wrong, at least we still have the frames going to the original video player and we can like recover from that. Um, so we clone the frames. We send one to the normal rect over here, but then we hide it. We hide it behind this, this screen that's saying this video is playing in picture in picture mode. And uh, we also uh, send the frames over to the picture-in-picture -picture player window. So that's how that works. But then this bug was filed uh, about that mechanism that we use called clone element visually, which does the, well, let me pump up the font a little bit. So here's the bug. HTML video element, maybe begin cloning visually, sets up the target element's video frame container with the selected video track when playing a media stream. That is correct. We do that right here. We get the video, the, the selected video stream track, and we add the new container to the, um, the target, the visual clone target, where we're actually going to be like um, placing the cloned frames with. But it forgets about things. Problem number one. one End cloning visually removes the target element's video frame container from the target element's selected video track. Is this ever non-null? Even with problem one fixed, the selected video track in maybe begin cloning visually and HTML video element end cloning visually might not be the same. And that's a bummer for cleaning up. It's worse for the user if the application changed the selected track and the pit player did not follow along. Simple test case that should trigger this bug follows. So what he does is, uh, we get user media. Uh, this is like asking the user to use the camera and like the, the like a microphone and a camera, and then we get the video track from that display device from the camera tr camera dis device. Um, then we create a video element and we append the video element to the document, and then we uh, what do we do? We make the video source object the the, so basically we set up the camera so that it's displaying in a video. So basically getting a camera feed on the screen, that's what this does. And then removing the video track and then putting the video track back. And what actually happens is uh, the picture-in-picture -picture player 
Oh, hold on a second. I'm there's a screen track as well. I, I got confused. There are a couple of different tracks. There's the the camera and then there's the screen. The screen track is like capturing display of an actual window on your desktop. Believe it or not, that's a that's a web API for doing that. Like um, a website can request um, to re to get frames, like th to record part of the desktop, which is like a crazy thing. But the, the web can do that. Now, no, actually, we we explicitly ask the user, like, is this okay? And which screen do you want to record, if any? So thankfully, it goes through like a very explicit user permission step. Um, but once the user has granted that permission, uh, then we can we can get those frames and we can display them inside of a video element. So for example, you could have um, the contents of another another window, like, I don't know, um, my editor window displayed inside of a video track, if you wanted. And you could do anything with those frames. You could like send them over the network. You could, it's like, it's a, it's a pretty powerful API, like unusually powerful. And that's why we put like, we, we put the permission dialogue in front of that. We really want to make sure that the user is aware of what's going down. Uh, so in the bug, it's like if we switch between the camera track to the screen track, uh, or rather it's the, yeah, from the camera track to the screen track, here we switch from camera to screen, then what we end up doing is still showing the camera track in the original picture-in-picture -picture player window. And then uh, the reporter, Andreas, has a proof of concept. So let's, let's check out the proof of concept. So here is the uh, proof of concept. I'm going to start. And right away, it's asking me for permissions. It's going to ask for my camera. So OK, go ahead. Uh, and then it also wants a screen of mine. So I'm going to give it my, uh, which screen do I want to give it? So this is the dialog, the permission dialog. Like, do you want to see your screen? Um, and what I'm going to give it is, uh, which one do I want to give it? Let's give it, um, which one, what is this? Sublime text, is Sublime listed? I bet it is, hang on, Sublime and Content Parent CPP, yeah. So this one, that's the title of it. And that's a little preview of what's gonna be be shared. I think that's relatively safe. And I, cr did I crash my browser? I did not, but. I am going to mute it. Okay, so that was a little confusing. There was probably a little bit of uh, uh, of what was going on. The um, the question from Ocris is: Is there also visual indication of screen tracking? Yes. This little indicator here is is telling the user, "Hey, uh, we're using the camera, the microphone, and we're sharing the screen." And you can revoke those permissions if you'd like. So this little pulsing indicator is trying to tell you that. So now uh, to recreate the bug, I'm going to open this track into, you can see my uh, green screen behind me. This is the uh, laptop camera, hello. Laptop camera, which is separate from the camera that I'm using to actually um, uh, broadcast with. So now that this is always on top, I'm going to display the screen. So I'm gonna switch tracks. And what happens is like it starts bugging out. It's actually trying to show both, it looks like. I don't know if you're getting that. Um, yeah, it looks like you are, but it's like it's bugging out hard. And then if I switch back to display camera, it's just bugged out hard. Um, this is this is a bad situation because what's supposed to happen is, um, oh, what's going on here? Oh, it was paused. Display camera, display screen, display camera, display screen. Display camera, display screen. That's what's supposed to happen. And then I'm supposed to be able to say like, display camera, display screen, display camera, display screen. But it's not happening. That's the bug. Um, display camera, display screen. Okay, so what are we gonna do about this? <coughs> uh, Ocris is like, looks like it's using the wrong context or monitor. <laughs> Smurf is like, yeah, we see it. I'll bet you're like, man, I've been watching you try to reproduce this bug for too long. How long have we been on this rock? Five weeks? Two days? Help me to recollect. Okay. 
Um, so what are we going to do about this? Well, we're already a couple of weeks into the beta release cycle. I'm uh, thinking that it's like, I know, I know that's not what you meant, Smurf D, but I thought I'd take advantage so I could play my new sound. Um, I want, uh, whenever something's on beta, we become really, really conservative of the kinds of patches that will land on beta because it's stabilizing. Um, our quality assurance engineers and testers are like, and our users are testing beta and we don't want it to change too, too much. If things go wrong, we're gonna like turn off features, but we ultimately want whatever's on beta to be as stable as possible. So like crash landing patches like crazy on beta is a really, really bad idea. Um, so if anything, if we, if we wanted to fix this bug, because it's down deep in like the media stack, I feel really unsafe about landing a patch and uplifting it to beta. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to, and I've talked about this with the, um, actually I have to update this comment too. We're gonna, hopefully for 72, this seems like the least risky option for 71. Uh, I'm gonna say edit, updated because I got the version numbers wrong. Um, the, the solution that we're going to go with is twofold. The first is to stem the bleed, to, to prevent the issue from arising, from users actually hitting that bug. And we can do that by preventing users from opening a, um, a video stream that's coming from a media stream. So that means a, a, a video that's displaying content from the screen or from a camera or from another stream that's been captured, which might be another video on the page or something. That's a pretty, these are exotic scenarios. Um, the least exotic scenario probably is the video one because uh, users that are using something like a, a, a chat window and want to be able to see themselves maybe uh, can then open it inside of a picture-in-picture -picture player window. Um, I'm not sure exactly how it works. It might actually disable picture-in-picture uh, -picture for the, the, the chat video case. Which is not great, but the goal then is to get it fixed for 72, and then um, you know whenever it goes up to 72, re-enabling it for that case. So to sum, we're going to disable the picture-in-picture -picture toggle and context menu item for videos that have uh, that are receiving frames from uh, a media stream, and then we are going to uh, prioritize trying to fix the actual underlying issue on nightly and then re-enabling the, uh, the feature for those media stream types of vid videos on nightly. And then, so when 71 goes out, you can't use picture in picture on, vi on media stream videos, and 72, you can. That's the goal, okay. So uh, how are we going to do this? The first step is to build beta, actually. Um, I'm actually going to, to write the patch for Nightly. I'm going to disable it on both Nightly and Beta so that users, um, uh, you know, if there's not too much of a difference between the two, uh, two branches. And then while we're working on fixing the issue on Nightly, uh, you know, we'll land patches to fix the issue and then I'll land another patch on Nightly to re-enable. So it's going to get disabled for both Nightly and Beta. Um, I think that's my plan. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I think that makes the most sense. Because the worst case scenario is that we don't remember, or not we don't remember, we don't actually figure out the problem on central uh, before uplift time. And if that's the case, then we would need to re-remember, oh, we need to disable that capability on beta. And that's an opportunity for human error for us to forget to disable it again or something. So I'm going to land it on both central and beta. That sucks a little bit for the people on Nightly who want to be able to use picture-in-picture -picture for like WebRTC chat um, uh, chat applications, but that dissatisfaction is motivation, motivation to actually fix the bug. <laughs> um, because what we're talking about right now is not fixing the bug, but hiding the bug or preventing users from hitting the bug, which is not as good as fixing the bug, but but better than not fixing the bug. Um, okay, so I've got a, um, a build of Firefox here up and running. 
And the way I want to reproduce this bug is uh, I'm just going to use this link right now and I'm just going to see if the toggle shows up whenever I request uh, Sorry, I hang on. Okay, not, not do audio, allow, and then not block. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on. Okay. I don't want to do audio because then we're going to get feedback. And select video, I'm going to do, yeah, that's good. And then for some reason, it like focuses the window that is being shared. And I have a feeling that's for like presentations because part of the use case of sharing a screen is for like presentations. So we've got the context of the um, the picture in picture toggle and we've got the context menu item. So the first thing to do, let's get rid of the toggle. And the good news is, is that we can detect these cases uh, where it's a, a, uh, a media stream video pretty easily. Um, and we have this uh, special function should show picture in picture toggle. And the good news is that we we can disable it. Um, like we have some heuristics on whether or not the um, uh, to show the toggle, and we can just add to these heuristics. So these requirements currently are: the video must be 45 seconds in length or longer. Neither the width or the height of the video can be less than 160 pixels. The video must have audio. The video must not be uh, pointed. Uh, must not be a media stream video. And then I'm going to refer to the bug, bug, such and such. Okay, so the way that we detect whether or not it's a media stream uh, bug, such and such, um, it's possible to confuse the underlying visual cloning mechanism by pointing by switching which video stream uh, video is rendering. We try to head that case off for now by disabling picture in picture, by hiding the picture in picture capability on video elements that have source object not equal to null. So if some video source object, so if it equal, if it's not equal to null, return false. So that means, holy smokes, we're a media stream video, don't show the toggle. Okay. So let's hide that, or let's close that, let's build it, and let's see if that hides the toggle. How long have we been on this rock? Five weeks? Two days? Help me to recollect. I'll get sick of it soon, but I'm not sick of it. Of it yet. Uh, video controls, sure. All right. And so, yeah, no toggle. That's great news. And we should hopefully still have the toggle for something like YouTube. Hard to choose a video. The Try Govinator. Uh, don't want advertisement. Hide the ad. Don't want to see the ad. I don't care. Here's another ad. Arrgh. Don't want to see it. So I'm going to scroll it out of view. Skip, skip the ad. Okay, and we do have the toggle there. This is good news. Now, it's not. this is not gonna like make users immune to the bug because some script on the page could potentially change the source object. Um, but uh, yeah, it's like, um, yeah, some script on the page could change the source object, but we're trying to head off the most common cases. All right. I didn't mean to get distracted by the Garbinator. Uh, so we're going to close this. Now let's see if we can hide the uh, the toggle for, or the menu item, the context menu item. Uh, picture in picture. Uh, 
how do we do that? NS context menu, picture and picture should display. Here's the should display. So we're going to add this some some capability here. We're going to add some information to the to what goes up to the parent process about the video. Um, on video on media if it's on media playback right ready state content type target uh, How are we going to do this? Source object. The source object is not going to be serializable. On video. So context.link. Like this is a, an excellent opportunity to like fill it with information about the video. Is there another place on video? Oh, here. If we're a video element, pip video. We're gonna say. If context dot target dot uh, source object uh, is not equal to null, context dot on media stream media on stream media. On media stream vid video equals true. So on pip video, I say context on media stream video equals false, and set it to true if there's no source object. And then over here, context on pip video. Here's where we like re, I don't know if this is like, I don't know why we do it this way. On media stream video, all of this should probably get cleaned up, but copy it over. And then uh, should, should display if on video and not uh, where this dot, on media stream video and target full screen, then we should hide the toggle or the hide the menu item. So let's see if that works. Then the other thing we should do finally is to actually disable the feature itself. So in the event that somehow the user finds a way around um, or there's a bug and how we've we're showing the options. We need to make it impossible or really, really hard actually to actually make picture in picture open. So um, we do that toggle picture in picture. If event is trusted, toggle picture in picture, send request. So that's yeah, that is the like the choke point is this function. Um, if video dot source object is not equal to null, um, Uh, 
throw a new error. Oh, I don't know if we want to throw an error. Basically, silently fail. We shouldn't ever hit this, but um, bug such and such. Uh, we disable, we don't allow viewing uh, videos elements with media stream streams in picture in picture for now. And then do do to bug one five nine two five three nine. Okay. Cool. So now uh, let's build and run. The boy three rule writes, wow, coding the thing I've never done. Epic. Welcome, the boy. It is the boy. Welcome, the boy. Okay, um, I'm gonna start. I'm going to choose that one. And then which video? Let's let's actually share ourselves. Okay. So yeah, the context menu item is now gone. That's good. Um, cool. And the toggle is gone. This is all great news. And if I were to go to YouTube, I should have both the context menu item and oh, don't sue me, Disney. Oh, okay. This is I, I clicked on the wrong thing. Um, that works still, and the toggle works still. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, great. Now let's run the tests, and then let's add a new test. Faustin writes, how can we contribute to Firefox if we are a developer? There are a starter point? Yes, yes, there are. Um, so we have a list of good first bugs for new contributors to hack on. We love new, when new contributors come out uh, uh, of the, you know, the ether of the internet and come hack on the, the browser. Um, so let me just quickly direct you to that site once this test is done running. Cool, all right, pass the tests. The, um, the site is codetribute. Mozilla.org. Let me drop that in the agenda. Uh, so, hang on, what are we working on today? Uh, disabling pip for media stream videos. I'll link it later. Here's codetribute.mozilla.org. That's the site. I will also drop that in the Twitch chat where the question uh, just came from. And let me go back for a second before I forget. And hook that up. So what this will do, what code tribute is, is a list of good first bugs. Uh, and it's broken down into like the various components and, and parts of not just Firefox, but Mozilla, like the, all of the projects, because it's not just Firefox, we've got like, um, the add on site is open source, Bugzilla is open source, our mobile browsers are open source, everything we do is pretty much open source. And so you can pick and choose what you want to contribute to and that can you can break it down by like, the, the product itself or the project itself, or you can break it down by the language. So if you, Faustin, are you, if you're like, a, oh, I am a C++ developer, then here are all the C++ bugs. Or if you're like, mm, Perl's my jam, then you can switch to Perl and see what items are here. And unfortunately right now there are no Perl items. If there are, are there any Python ones? Yep, lots. And so what you do is you find one of these bugs um, and all the ones that are listed are not assigned and that's usually a good thing. Find one that interests you and then create a Bugzilla account. So if you if you go here, uh, let, I'm just gonna choose one. Uh, oh, in this case, it's uh, this project is actually on GitHub. So if you have a, a GitHub account, you can comment in the bug and say, I'd like to work on this or comment on the issue rather and say, I would like to work on this, but you need to create a free GitHub account. Alternatively, if uh, you get linked to Bugzilla, you can create a free Bugzilla account. Let's let's click on this one, for example. It's a Bugzilla bug, um, or it's a bug in Bugzilla for the JavaScript engine, and you can uh, 
sign in to Bugzilla and comment and say, I would like to work on this bug. And every one of the bugs inside of Codetribute has a mentor assigned to them. So the mentor will respond and say, hey, um, here's what you need to do to get started. Um, do you have this? Do you have that? Here's where in the code base you can look to get, to get started. Um, for this particular bug, I would look over here. Here are my suggestions. Here's some starting points. And like of all things, probably the most important is like getting a build of Firefox going. So build Firefox. There's a document here on a simple Firefox build, um, how to get Firefox built. That's a great way to get started as well. Building on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux instructions are here. It's a lot simpler than you probably would think. If you've got a, a slow network, it can take a little while to clone down several gigabytes worth of data. Um, but, you know, and, and if you've got a slow CPU or a CPU that only has a couple cores, it can take a while to build if you're doing a full-blown binary build. But if you are doing what's called an artifact build where you download the binary components, that can save you a lot of time. So uh, if you're gonna, if you're kind of strapped for CPU resources, make sure whenever you're doing these things that you read the instructions on how to do an artifact build. So hopefully that answers your question, Faustin. Um, what am I doing here? What am I doing? Oh, right, so our tests passed, that's great. Let's add a new test. We have to test this case. Um, so we wanna make sure that A, the context menu does not, uh, item does not appear and that the toggle does not appear for a video that has a like a, a source object. Um, now how do I how do I do that? Whenever you set up a source object in a test, I think that's one of the things I want to check here. Um, source how did, how did in the um, the demo video here, how does he do it? He gets a, sets the source object like that. So let's look for a test where the source object is set. Oh, he captures it from a canvas, or you can't, in tests, we'll capture it from a canvas. That's handy. Okay. Um, uh, do we have any picture in picture? Oh. Oh, this is for the web platform. Yeah. We don't currently support these. But um, in this test, it fills a rectangle with black, and then it requests picture in picture. I could probably just use the same idea, is fill a canvas with like the color red, and then um, make sure that the picture in picture, like set a video such that it has the, uh, the frames cloned, and then make sure that we cannot open picture in picture with it. That's my plan. So uh, let me pump up the font here so you can see what I'm doing. You're welcome, Faustin. I hope, I hope, happy hacking, happy hacking. Uh, let's create a new test. Mock, add test, toolkit, components, picture in picture tests. We're gonna call it browser. Um, uh, disabled for media stream videos.js. Great, and now I'm going to open that test, then I'm going to add some documentation. Uh, due to bug uh, this, we're disabled, we've disabled the picture in picture toggle for uh, video elements with source object set. Um, to anything other than null. Uh, we will revert uh, this, dis uh, we will re-enable picture, in we've disabled the picture in picture toggle and context menu item for video elements uh, other than null. We will re-enable picture in picture support for these types of videos elements when the underlying bug is fixed. Okay, test uh, disabled for media stream videos. Okay, so we're gonna implement the test. 
Uh, what's the test? How are we going to do this? I'm going to. Instead of loading a page, let me quickly check out what I have in for uh, for. Oh, this is the thumbnails. No, no, not thumbnails. Picture and picture, picture and picture, picture and picture. What do I have for utilities? Trigger picture and picture. ready who uses that it's test toggle test URL test loads a page tests the provided video element for the toggle both appearing and opening in the expected cases so you can set expectation to be whether or not it's supposed to open or not cool I can use that toggle helper true if we expect the toggle to be visible and clickable Great. And then context menu wise, uh, there is a test over here for the context menu. Well, I'll probably add a new case in here. the the video the media stream case okay let's maybe do that first now that I think about it um, should show picture in picture menu item should be unchecked close context menu okay um, Due to bug, we are hiding the picture in picture context menu for video elements that have source object uh, as not set to anything but null. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to say await special power spawn browser uh, actually I'm going to use content task just to be consistent within the file it's probably better than better than switching over to the new thing um, what are we going to pass in it's going through each of the videos Video ID, async video ID. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. So let's create a canvas. Let canvas equal uh, content dot document create element canvas. And then we're going to get the video ID. Video equals content document get element by ID video ID. And then we're going to say canvas get context 2D. We're going to fill, we're going to basically crib all of this uh, canvas.width, canvas.height. Um, video dot source object equals canvas dot capture stream. 
do we have that canvas.capture stream? Is that a thing that we have? It might have to be. We have Moz capture stream. Moz capture stream. Right. So uh, equals Moz capture stream. Uh, video dot play. I guess we don't even need to play the video. At this point, we should open the context menu for it, and it should be hidden. Should not be showing. Should not be showing picture in picture menu item. So we assert that it is hidden. Menu item. Some global that we have access to. Yeah, okay. And then we're going to hide the context menu. Okay, let's run this test. Test toolkit components, picture in picture, browser, context menu. How long have we been on this rock? Five weeks? Two days? Help me to recollect. So Canvas, Moz Capture Stream is not a function. What? Uh, dot Moz Capture Stream. Huh. We can do it on element. What's the element? It's an audio element. Oh man. All right. So I have to create another video element, I guess. Uh, hmm. So, uh, New video equals video. Uh, new video dot uh, new video dot source equals video dot source, and then uh, new video well, it's capture stream. Okay. And then I'm also going to wait until all the videos are ready. I think I can do that. Ensure videos ready. Browser. All right. Run it. Waiting for videos to be ready. Oh, that's no good. Oh, is that because I never, hang on. Um, new video, content.document.body append child new video. Construct a new video pointed at our test. Construct a new video element. And capture a stream from it to redirect to the video that we're testing. Uh, tested video. I'm going to call it tested video. Hmm, and it's still showing the toggle. 
What's going wrong here? The context menu is showing or is hiding, which is good. Um, let's not do this step. Kind of expected. Um, wait, new promise, resolve, set timeout. Expect to see some video frames being sent to the new video. Um, new video source, Moz Capture Stream. Source object. V out. Play. Moss capture stream until ended. Play. Oh, both need to be played. Oh, okay, hang on. Um, Moss capture stream. Await tested video dot play. Await new video dot play. Interestingly, the toggle still appears, but thankfully, it is ignored when we click on it. Okay. So we can get rid of that sleep. We need to figure out what's going on, why the toggle is still displaying. That's why we test. There's a case here that we're missing. So let me, let me see here. Um, in the picture in picture video controls code here. Oh, do I have always show? Set in the test. Um, always show is set to true. Yeah, okay. That's why. Okay, that makes me feel better. So now I'm going to uh, wait special uh, wait simple test push pref and set false. Disabling of the toggle on source object media stream can uh, is overridden by the always show pref. Okay, so now we open up. Um, what are we gonna do? We're gonna open up a tab. We're gonna test toggle. Yeah, that's the right idea, but we're gonna wanna do like a little bit of preparation. And I think test toggle gives us the ability to do some video preparation. Prep function, yeah. An optional asynchronous function run before running the toggle test. That's cool. Yay, thought ahead. I, I don't mean to call myself cool, but uh, I thought ahead here. Async browser, uh, so can toggle, false. Can toggle, false. So what we're gonna do is the exact same thing pretty much as the context menu thing, where we like create a new video and Construct a new video element and capture a stream from it uh, to redirect to the video that we're testing. Uh, test toggle. Prep 
function. Hmm. It only runs the first time. So I'm going to need to do it for both. That's probably OK. Um, and capture a stream from it to redirect to both testing videos. So create a new video, uh, tested video um, for uh, let video ID of with controls, no controls. Uh, oh, hold on. I have to do this inside of a content task. Await content task spawn because we're doing it inside of the content process. Um, so we construct, whoops, a new video. We append the video. We're going to uh, get a reference to the first video. Or right, you know what? I am just going to manually new video dot source equals what is it? Um, test video dot mp4. We append and await new video dot play. And then for let video ID tested video, we're going to say tested video source object is most capture stream and then tested video play. And then we expect can toggle to be false for both of these. Let's see if this works. If it works right out of the box, I'll be pretty surprised, but pretty happy. Let's picture in picture, tests, browser, disabled. Smurfy's like, way late, but this could also be interesting to read. This is more related to the add-ons contributing, though. Um, whoop, explosion. Simple test push pref env is not a function. Is it supposed to be special powers push pref env? Push pref env. Special powers. That's what it is. Special powers. And then we're going to pop. Well, I don't know if we need to pop. Out toggle should have opacity grid. It should be false. Can toggle false? Uh, why are you waiting for the toggle? Toggle reach target opacity wing. Can toggle should be false. Why are you even waiting? So I'm going to make this new video loop. Um, new video dot loop equals true and we're going to play so we should see them all just kind of going okay so why are we attempting to wait for the toggle to reach a certain opacity. If we 
expect the video, the toggle to be visible and clickable by the mouse for the associated video. What can toggle? Why would we have expected it to have reached the hover toggle opacity? Do we have any cases where it's like not supposed to work? Can toggle false? I think they're all true. Oh, here, test opaque overlay is not clickable when overlaid with opaque elements. Test toggle. Toggle opaque overlay.js. This might be an oversight. Does this test even an eight? Look, toggle opaque overlay. Opaque. Skip if true. Huh. This thing might be broken. Well, at any rate, here's maybe one of the reasons why. Um, test toggle, helper, aim for toggle. If can toggle is true, if we expect toggle to be visible and clickable. If can toggle. Oh, why am I running this test? That's that's disabled probably for other reasons. Let's run this one. Hovering the toggle rect now, and what is it waiting for? Hovering. Toggle should have opacity greater than one. Where is it? Right now. Waiting. Uh, hover opacity, hover toggle opacity. Waiting for a toggle to reach full opacity. Is that where else? Click on toggle and expecting no picture in picture window opens. Right? Dump. Can toggle? Can toggle. Smurfdies, like what do you think? This is a, uh, a more related to the add-ons contributing, contributing to the add-ons world. Hmm. Can toggle is an object. Oh boy. <laughs> Can toggle is an object. So we're actually passing in the wrong thing. Test toggle helper can toggle. Expectations. 
can toggle video ID and whether or not you can toggle this toggle hover. And what are we expecting it to be? It's an object, the ID, and then an object can toggle false. Um, I see. Will this work? Can I do destructuring like this? I don't know if I can do destructuring like that. Can talk good. I can do destructuring like that. That's amazing. Okay. Um, hovering the toggle rect. Expect to see the right mouse events. Um, line 186. Six. On assert saw mouse events, that's in toggle helper 382. Here, for videos without the built-in controls, we expect that all mouse events should have fired. Oh, that's presuming, uh, hang on. Try that. In timeout, expect to get the right mouse events. That equals empty. Deep equal empty. So what did it get? Insert saw mouse events. Content saw mouse events JSON stringify. Content saw the mouse events pointer down, mouse down, pointer up, mouse up. And so I guess, presumably, elsewhere, we were expecting there to be no click events. Cert saw mouse events. How is it supposed to be? Cert saw mouse events is expecting events. If it's true, then so if the second argument is false. Not controls. Use without the built in controls. We expect that all mouse events should have fired. And that's. Four thirty one. It's actually this one down here. So can't toggle. Clicking on toggle, expecting no picture in picture window opens. Synthesizing the mouse. Videos without building controls, we expect that all mouse. Well, in this case, we expect we should always see the mouse events if we are not supposed to be able to see the toggle. If we don't, if we aren't showing the toggle, we expect all mouse events to be seen. So this might just be a buggy test helper, like an untested code path in the test helper. <laughs> that could very well be. Okay, another test failure, but this one's different. 
this one's on line 384. Here. Oh, cert saw mouse events right. Can toggle. Else, for if we're if we're not showing the toggle, we expect to see all mouse events. Uh, what's the what's the terminology? And what's the third argument for? Cert saw most events to be true. What's the third argument? False. Is expecting click. False. When are we expecting to see a click? True. Oh, actually, we would expect to see the click. Yeah, so it's saw mouse events. All right, let's see that. Oop. Oh, we don't get the click. Don't we get the click? Is it the size mouse at point? It's just a mouse down. Because maybe we don't we don't do the mouse up. That's why. Okay. Whereas over here we do mouse down and I think mouse up. Getting a click event. Why aren't we getting a click event? So this should pass, and that's good, but now we have another mystery. Event is undefined, picture picture child line 578, check last mouse move. So now my question is, contents, oh yeah, contents on those events with the click here, but not here. Right When we right click, we see pointer down, mouse down, pointer up, mouse up. Um, where's the control, where's the frame, click event helper? Event saw event event dot type on target event dot target dot id. Saw event pointer down pointer. Hmm, no ID. Uh, let's get uh, target.tag name then. 
What could that element be? The HTML node. Wait, so if we right click Hang on. So add event listener, click uh, console log E. Now I right click. Whoops, 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 didn't mean to do that. All right, let's try that again. Right click. Oh, so click events, we don't see click events when we right click. We see click events on left click, but not on right. Is that is that the way it always has been? Safari. Uh, let's see. Inspect element. I feel like I should know this. Where is the console? So left click, yep. Now what if I right click? Huh, so that's why, okay. Now I guess, uh, um, note, uh, note that the right click does not result in a click event firing. Okay, fair enough. So that explains that, and I think we've got our passing test here. So let's get rid of this. Let's take a look. We've got some uh, chatter in the Twitch chat. Let's see here. Mo Jojo writes, yo, could you possibly help me? Here, I'm gonna run this test with test verify to Make sure that there aren't any lingering races. And then Derelict, <laughs> Derelict 68 writes, what, what with? And Smurf D goes, guess it has to do with the context menu showing, but I think that's maybe unrelated. Um, Smurf D is probably commenting on something he saw. And uh, Mo Jojo goes, my PC apparently is running different RAM slots, two of which are DDR2137, and the other two are DDR2400. All right, go on. Go on, Mojojo. Is uh, is that resulting in weird behavior, or is it just like what's what's the dealio, Mojojo? Mo Mojojo. Well, I'll wait for Mojojo. Oh, will it affect the processing speed if they're not the same type? In my experience, it's usually best to have RAM of the same type um, to like, maybe this is just like some superstition. I just have this like recollection of reading it somewhere or maybe someone told me that you wanna have like a balanced sticks of RAM, at least back whenever I put RAM in my computer. Like I've got a MacBook and I've never, I've opened it up before to like replace the hard drive, but like I, I don't stick RAM sticks into it. Um, but back whenever I had like my, my PC tower at home, what I would do is always buy my RAM in like pairs. I would always have pairs and um, I would make sure that they were all the same type. And it's possible, maybe someone here in this chat is like uh, gonna, oh yeah, Derelict68 goes, I think the motherboard automatically underclocks the faster RAM. That makes sense. Having a consistent ra uh, memory access speed makes sense to avoid like weird things going on. Like your the motherboard board might want to have just like consistent speed regardless of which stick it's it's reading from. So then it might just choose the slower of the two and and use that throttle it down to that speed. That makes sense. So if you've got a faster stick, you might not be taking advantage of it. I'm not a hardware expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I seem to recall having read somewhere that like you want to have your sticks of RAM all pretty uniform. 
Um, anyway, mock verify has passed. So let's see what we've got here. This is great. It's almost the end of t the time to stream, uh, and uh, we've gotten something done, which is great. Oh, going to get rid of this dump statement here inside of tests head dump. We can get rid of that. And then what else? Can toggle? Uh, I'm going to get rid of that inside of head as well. And then what else? Info. OK, now I'm going to break this patch up into two parts. Um, I use commit interactive to choose the first part. The first part will be the actual fix, and the second part will be uh, the test. So the fix is here. I can even probably break it down even further. There's not allowing the videos to actually toggle. We'll do that one last. So let's start with the the um, not displaying the the toggle. So turn everything else off. And so actually, what I'm going to spin out a new bug. Actually, create a new bug. Get video on your controls. And it's going to say it um, see also this bug. Um, disable picture and the picture in picture or hide the picture in picture toggle and context menu. Uh, items for video for media stream video elements C bug that and uh, specifically and bug comment one comment one for context and this is what's going to block milestone three and I'm going to unblock milestone three for the other one. But this one is like, this is a task. This is for all platforms. Um, it's for me. I'm going to take it. I'm going to give it a P1 priority. And what else about this thing? Which version does it affect? 71. 71, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So that gives us our new bug number. And then I'm going to say commit this. This is the video controls change. Bug such and such. Disable the picture and picture toggle for media stream videos. Or I'm going to say hide the picture and picture toggle. And I'm going to have Jason Voorhees review that part. Then I'm going to do the next commit, which is. Derelict 69. Uh, the, not the tests, but the context menu. Context menu, context menu. We'll have Heiss review this part. Uh, hide the uh, picture and picture menu context menu item or media stream videos. Hmm. 
Mojojo says, thank you so much, guys. Uh, you're welcome. And then the next part, commit interactive. This last part, I'm going to have Mark Streamer review. Bug. This um, prevent the. Uh, don't allow toggling picture and picture. Don't allow in, uh, in knitting picture and picture for video for media stream videos. Mark streamer. Then finally the test. I'm gonna have Mark review that. I'm gonna add some new commentary too. Oh, you know what? Before we do this, we should run all of the tests again. Whoops. Mock test. Now I'm going to post them up for review, and I'm going to end the session. I'm going to end the episode. Rut row. What's the, uh, what are we waiting on here? Browser context menu. Did I leave a wait inside there? Browser context menu. Yeah, I waited, I left a 15 second wait in there. Let's, let's not do that. Fifty tests passed. Woo! All right. Um, so now let's commit these tests. Commit. Uh, uh, te add tests to ensure that the picture-in-picture -picture toggle and context menus don't do not display for media stream. Videos. This has been like probably one of the more productive uh, joy of codings for the last little while. Hey, you know, not bad, not bad. I want to update the commit message. Um, This also updates the uh, can toggle equals false code paths in the picture in picture moki test head.js file, which were obviously never really exercised since they go, they were never really exercised until now. All right. Push for review. Come on, that's fab. Submit. Tip. Go, go, go. Uh, and so, like, with that, we're done. Hey, thank you so much for watching episode 195 of The Joy of Coding. I hope that was interesting. My name is Mike Conley, and uh, I want to thank you for being here with me. If you are here live and chatting, and if you're watching the recording, well, thanks for watching the recording. And um, 
you know, if, if you are in a place in the world where you celebrate, you know, Halloween, uh, I'm in, I'm in Canada and Halloween's pretty common around here. So tomorrow is, uh, Halloween, uh, happy Halloween to you. And if you're in another pl part of the world where you celebrate something else, well, enjoy that. And, um, and I'll see you next week, uh, as per normal. So let me just switch back to this mode. And with that, I'll say goodbye. Thanks so much again. Take care. Bye-bye. See ya.